My name is Lajene McMillan, and I'm a new media artist, creative technologist, and educator, working primarily with motion capture technology, as well as 3D animation. Today, I wanna to show you two really cool tools made by Deep Motion. Their Animate 3D AI-powered motion capture software, as well as their 3D character creation software. I'm also going to be using today the technology kit from the New York Public Library. In it, I'll be using the ring light, the phone attachment, as well as an iPhone and tripod. So let's get started. So I'm gonna walk over to my ring light here and I'm gonna turn it on by using the power button in the back. What's also cool is that there are two knobs in the back that can change the intensity of the lighting as well as the coloring. All right, so first I'm gonna take a picture of me looking straight into the camera. And for the video, we just wanna make sure that we're capturing our full bodies. So you wanna make sure that you have your hands, your arms, your legs, um, as well as your feet, torso, and head in the full shot. Um, and that's just so that the artificial intelligence can actually read your movements to be able to be translated into motion capture data. And I'm just gonna do like some wiggles, like nothing serious, um, but you can do a range of different movements. So. I'm just gonna get started. Okay, this is good. You can do whatever types of movements you wanna do. And once you get a good range of movement, you can just stop. And yeah, you wanna make sure that for the premium account, you are recording up to 10 seconds, so I might have to cut down this video, but um, once you're finished, you can just upload it. Um, to your iPad. And that's what we'll get to doing right now. Thanks. Okay, so once we go to the Deep Motion site, um, this is the page that we'll get. Um, the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is sign up um, using the um, yellow sign up button at the top right. Um, you're just gonna put your information in, your first and last name, your email address, um, and how you heard about them. And once you're able to sign up for your free account, you can then head over to the sign in tab and just type in your email and password, which is what I'm going to do right now. Okay, great. Once we sign into our account, we're just going to click on the animate 3D tab. And you can see that I have already uh, used a little bit of my time. Um, but basically, with the freemium account, you do get 30 seconds per month um, to use for animations. However, it does um, require you to break those 30 seconds into 10 seconds each time. So essentially, you can only create three characters with 10 seconds of movement each. So I'm going to click on Create. And basically, you have the option of using one of their default characters um, for this project. Um, but I'm actually going to use their Ready Player Me 3D model character creation tool. So to do this, I'm just going to click on what I want my avatar to, to have a body like. Then I'm going to um, upload the photo that I took earlier today. Awesome. And once we upload that photo, it'll generate a base character that we can then work from. Just gonna make my skin tone darker. Nice. You have the option of changing the hairstyle. Yeah, can change the color. Probably do something fun today. You can also change the outfits. And once you're finished with your character, I'm just gonna add some glasses really quickly. You can click on next and you don't have to sign up. Then you just need to name your character.
Once you create your character, you can then click on create animation. And now we're gonna upload the video that we took earlier. So just as a, um, just to reiterate, essentially your video needs to be um, no bigger than 1920 um, by 1080 um, for the resolution. And it needs to be no longer than 10 seconds for the freemium account. So you may have to edit your video if it's too long. Okay, and once your video and your character is all set, we can then select start job. And now this process is just gonna take the longest. And once you get here, um, DeepMotion does have a online visualizer, um, but sometimes it doesn't work, but that's okay because we're just actually gonna download our character. And um, you'll see here that we have the options to download the character as either the BVH, FBX, or GLB file. Um, as I said um, earlier, um, basically we're going to be working primarily with a GLB file format um, because we want to be able to have all of the information, including the model, the textures and materials, um, as well as the animations. While I can still get that with the, with the FBX, um, I am actually going to be using this character for um, a web a, a, a web uh, project, so I'm just going to use it um, as GLB. And the BVH data, um, as I said before, is just the movement data. So I'm just going to click on download. And once you download your character, you can then use it for various different types of projects. We're going to head over to Glitch. Glitch is an online platform used to build websites. This will allow us to keep track of our code on any web browser. Once you get onto the Glitch site, you're either going to want to sign in or sign up. And once you sign up, you're just going to head down to the description of this video and look at the test code that we have provided for you. Once we're here, we're just going to select Remix so that we create a copy of the code. And now I just want to take you through some basic definitions that we're going to need to know. Essentially, we are creating this code using HTML. HTML is a bedrock for our internet. It's what everything on the web is based off of. From HTML, we have JavaScript. And JavaScript is a programming language that allows you to make web pages that are more interactive. You can embed things into your web page like videos, motion graphics, and in our case, 3D characters with embedded animations. We're also going to be using WebVR, which is a JavaScript API um, for creating immersive 3D and virtual reality experiences. An API or application programming interface is a construct made available in programming languages that allow developers to create more complex functionality more easily. From there, we'll be using A-Frame. An A-frame is a web framework for building immersive web experiences. Essentially, A-frame allows us to make immersive experiences a lot easier. Now, let's head over to our code. On the left panel of our Glitch website, we will see a little tab that says index.html. Make sure that you click on it. Now that you're in the index of our web page, I'm just going to go through a few of the elements in this website, starting with the HTML element. The HTML element is the root element of an HTML page. Right under that, we have the head. And the head element contains meta information about the document. Meta information, or metadata, is data that provides information about other data. And so in other words, this is data about data. Within this head of our website, we have two scripts. One is pointing to um, the A-frame code, and the next one is pointing to the A-frame extras code, which is going to allow us to implement animations into our website. 
right under that, we have the assets that we want to add to our scene. Um, in this case, we are going to be adding our animation that we created using Deep Motion. And to do that, we are just going to head over to the Assets tab. And for reference, once we head over to the Assets tab and we click on Upload an Asset, choose File, we are going to look for um, our GLB. However, unfortunately, since we're on an iPad, um, we, are, we will be unable to upload any GLB or models from our iPads or iPhones. So for this portion, um, when you're uploading any um, assets or objects to your scene, you'll just have to do that on a computer. And if you don't have access to a computer or a desktop or a laptop, um, if you just go to the New York Public Library, you should be able to use one of their laptops or computers um, to be able to upload your objects and pictures. As you can see here, I do have a character available, but I also have a picture. Um, and really quickly, I just wanted to show you something that's a really cool um, and a really neat trick um, with VR applications. Um, and that is adding echo rectangular images. And an echo rectangular image is essentially an image that when you paste it together on a sphere, it turns into a 360 image. One cool place that you can find free echo rectangular images is on Flickr. And so here on Flickr.com, you can search for all different types of 360 images. And you can see that when they're flat, they're sort of like panoramic in nature. Um, but when you stitch them together, um, you'll see that you'll be able to also um, see them as um, a 360 image that's all around you. So once you search for one photo that you like, you can download that as well as, a, as an image. And as I said before, you'll also need to do this portion on a desktop. This one's nice. I'm just going to download the medium. Cool. And then we'll head over and then we'll upload that asset here. Cool. Back to the code. Um, I am going to replace this um, source in, the, in our assets folder to the model that we just uploaded just now. Basically, in our assets folder, it generates something called a CDN file. And a CDN is a link that allows you to access any file that, meet, that we may need to use for this project. In this case, this is just this character and animation. Um, and then it also generated another CDN file for this echo rectangular image down at the bottom. So if I copy this CDN, this URL, and I head back over to my HTML, we see here that in my assets, I have a source. And I'm going to replace this source with the new model that I just uploaded. So I'm just going to delete everything that's in between these quotation marks. And then I'm going to replace it with my new link. The one thing to note here, though, is that we're going to actually delete any of these numbers or letters that are past the GLB file. For some reason, if you keep that there, you won't be able to see the character. You can also name the um, character whatever you want. In this um, tutorial, I just named it Mixamo Anim. And essentially, this allows us to then call that model into um, our scene later on. So you see when I highlight it here, it's also highlighted there at the bottom where it says entity. Okay, so this scene also comes with 
um, various other elements, one being a box, a sphere, a cylinder, a plane, and a sky. We are going to replace this sky image with the echo rectangular image that we uploaded a little bit earlier. So again, I'm going to go to my assets folder. I'm going to select the image that I just uploaded. I'm going to click on copy URL. And then back in my index.html, where it says a sky source, I am just going to delete this link and replace it with my new link. Now that we have our ever rectangular image in our model uploaded, we now just have to make sure that we call the model back using this A entity element. Um, it's a GLTF model that we downloaded. Um, the name of it in this case is called Mixamo Anum. The scale of this character is one by one by one units. So I'm just gonna play around with um, some of these elements just so that you can see a little bit of a clear representation of what's happening. So first, we I'm going to go into my preview just to show you what we have right now. OK, so we have our new 360 image in the background. And we have our character, two units ahead of us with the box, the sphere, the cylinder, and the plane. And if I come back to my code, and I change one of these, let's change the scale of our character. Let's make our character smaller. So I'm going to change these numbers to 0.5. So we're going to change it. We're going to make it smaller by half. Now, if we go and we view this in our next slide, we'll see that our character is a lot smaller. You know what would be cool? Like, I'm going to try to move our character so that it's standing on top of the box. So if I come back to my code, we have our A box element right under A scene, and its position is negative 1, 0.5, and negative 3. So I'm going to change the position of my character to those two, and we'll see what happens. Great, so now that we see our character is inside the box, we're gonna to have to move it up by maybe like a few units so that it's on top of the box and not inside of it. So I'm gonna go back to my code. And I'm gonna change the position of the Y axis. Dang. And now let's preview that. Great. <laughs> so now we have our character standing on top of the box in the scene. So that's where I'll stop now with our tutorial. Um, but if you're interested in learning more about A-Frame, you can always head over to the A-Frame site. Um, the A-Frame site is aframe.io. And within their documents, they have all of these various different tutorials um, about all of the various components and entities that you can add to your projects to make them more interesting and complex. So I'm going to go back to my scene. Thank you so, so much for doing this tutorial with me. Um, I'm really excited to see um, all of your projects and what you come up with. Thanks so much. <laughs>